Bethany here in Jacksonville being joined by the one and only Mr. Colby Covington. Now I see Colby Covington Incorporated is going extra strong because Dana White confirmed to TSN you're next in line for that title shot. Yeah, Colby Covington Incorporated, you know, mixed with MMA Masters has never been better. You know, there's, this is Colby Chaos Covington 2.0, and you're seeing a new version of myself every single day I step in the gym, and I'm getting better every single day, and I haven't even hit my full potential. So Dana White sees that, and he knows what's coming. He knows I'm the, the best welterweight on the planet right now, and, you know, we're going to go set it out in the octagon soon. I know all your fans are excited to see you back and return to that octagon, but after training with MMA Masters for some time now, what aspect of your game do you think that you improved the most on? Uh, you know, I would say all around. It's tough to say one particular area because my jiu-jitsu has gotten so much higher. My takedowns are such another level because I have Daniel Valverde. You know, he's a jiu-jitsu black belt and he's a judo black belt. So I'm learning on trips and sweeps and like a lot of body lock stuff that I didn't know before in wrestling. Wrestling, I'm just shooting on the legs. And I'm taking guys down. Now I'm like getting foot sweeps. I'm getting su suplexes and, you know, my finishing skills and my submissions are a lot better now. So, you know, there's a reason that, you know, American top team and Dan Lam Lambert reached out to Dan. Daniel Valverde and they want and they paid him to come over there and help instruct them because he's the best jiu-jitsu guy in the world and they wanted his knowledge and and back in the day and and now he's got his own gym and I'm thankful that we're able to team up together and the best is yet to come you haven't seen anything yet yes absolutely now speaking of the fight this weekend though that rematch between Usman and Masvidal you told me a few weeks ago you think that Usman beats Masvidal again but when you fight Usman again how do you see that fight playing out for yourself yeah I see myself finishing Usman if we fight again but you know, to be honest, I think he's going to retire. I think after this weekend, he retires. He, he knows what's ahead of him now. He knows I'm, I'm the next up for him, and he knows he can't beat me. He's been in there with me. He knows how tough I am in there. He's been in there with George, and he knows how easy it is, so that's why he's taking his easy paycheck again when George hasn't done anything to earn this fight. He lost 50-43, and then he sat on the sideline for a year ducking me, and then all of a sudden he gets to fight for a title again. So something's not adding up. You know, I just honestly think that Usman and, and Masvidal are are going to retire before ever having to fight me because they know what's going to happen the embarrassment that goes the the public embarrassment you know they, they don't want to get embarrassed in front of the whole world and, and that's what i would do to them well you mentioned that you think usman will retire if he beats masvidal again then ideally for you who would you like to fight if he does retire and then you fight someone for the title who who would be that worthy opponent you know what as Donald Trump's favorite fighter, as the people's champion, as America's champion, I'm, I'm going to do what the people want. You know, I'm going to leave that in the hands of the UFC, in the hands of Dana White, in the hands of Hunter Campbell. I'm going to let them make those decisions. I know I'm the best welterweight in the planet right now. I'm going to keep training every single day like I am, and I'm going to keep preparing for the best the second best welterweight in the world out there that, that is out there right now and, and when he steps in the octagon and we fight for the title next I'm going to destroy him I'm going to smash him and I'm going to show him the greatest welterweight of all time well that press conference did take place today did you get a chance to watch it or were you on your way here uh, no, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I was actually hanging out with uh, Jorge, Jorge Masvidal's legal wife, you know, and, and the mother of his two children. So, you know, we were just chatting, ki catching up, you know, taking a trip down memory lane. So, you know, I'm not interested in seeing those guys. They don't have charisma. They don't have personality, you know, just I don't want to hear what they have to say because it's all it's all fake news. They don't even come with truth and facts anymore. They're just they're just straight lying now. So I, I, who wants to hear anything those guys say? Well, Jorge did mention when he was asked that if he does beat Usman this weekend, would he give Usman a trilogy fight? And he said yes. So what do you make of those comments, I guess? I mean, he's got tw almost 20 losses now. What I make of those comments is he's just he's just grasping for straws. He has nothing else. What's he going to say? You know, he, he knows he's not going to win that fight. He just wants to act like he's confident, like he's going to win that fight. He knows how this fight plays out 10 out of 10 times. Usman's going to get his hand raised 10 out of 10 times. It's an easy fight for him, and he knows it's an easy fight for him. So, you know, I don't really have anything to say. I know I'm next in line. doesn't matter who wins on Saturday night. Dana White said I'm next in line. I'm next in line. They can't deny me. They've delayed me long enough. I, I will not be denied. Well, Bell aside, though, besides that, for you personally, which fight would be mo more satisfying and who would be more satisfying to have a win over, Usman or Masvidal? You know, that's a, that's a tough question because 
Personally, I would say Usman because he cheated when we fought. He, he straight up cheated like a coward, like he, he like he is. He lied in the fight. He said he, it was a nut shot. I was going to finish him with a liver kick. He would have quit then. He was faking an eye poke on the other eye in the fourth round. I mean, he was hitting me in the back of the head for the finishing strikes when I wasn't even out. I was still in the fight. It was an early stoppage. Mark Goddard saved his life multiple times in the fight. You know, he, he gave him plenty of breaks in the fight. He gave him an early stoppage. I stood right up and protested it. I was winning the fight 3-1. to one, So... I want that rematch with, with those men, you know. Now, it's been 18 months since I fought him, a year and a half since the last time I fought him. You don't think I've gotten better in that? And I, I've just, I've weeded out all the bad things, all the negative energy in my life with the American Top Team, all the drama over there at that gym. And I have my own gym that cares about me, that, that, that just cares about our growth and our development. So that's why you're seeing Colby Covington 2.0 right now. And I want my rematch at, at Usman, you know. The only reason I wanted to fight Street Judas Masvidal it's a it's a serious beef you know like i hate the guy he hates me and and that's being nice about it you know we were best friends for eight years you know he's walking around like he's the king of the miami he, he you know he's a piece of shit person he cheated on his wife he cheated on his kids you know he, he lies to his kids he's just not a good person so i want to expose him in front of the whole world and i was willing to go back in the rankings because i'm the number one welterweight in the world jorge masal is number four so i was willing to go back in the rankings to do a favor for a personal grudge match for the ufc but right now I, i'm not going backwards i'm only going forwards i want my belt and i'm coming for that belt I know Jorge did an interview with BT Sport today, and I believe he told BT Sport that if he wins, and they, of course, brought your name because you would be first in line for that title shot, that he would break your jaw on his time. What do you make of that? I mean, it's hilarious. Does anybody believe anything that guy says anymore? I mean, he was out on that interview like a couple weeks ago on ESPN saying that Dan kicked us out of ATT and this and that. You want to hear the real truth about ATT and all the wrath that that what happened? First off, Georgia come to the gym every single day when I'm training in the pro class. He'd disrupt the, the gym and the pros. He'd be screaming across the gym. He wouldn't come to my face. If Ori Masvidal was a man, he would come straight up to my face and he'd be like, let's fight. You know, he wouldn't even, he would just swing. He would do it. But he's do, yelling across the gym because he's got coaches holding him back because he's scared. He won't come in my face and say something because he knows what I'll do to him if he comes in my face. So he's screaming across the gym, making a big commotion, making a fit. So of course Lambert had to step in because he's disrupting the pro training climb. He's disrupting the whole gym. So he had to step in. He kicked us both out. Well, guess what? He invited us both back. And that's where George is leaving out details because Dan came to me. He said, hey, I, I want you back. I made a mistake. I didn't mean to kick you out. You know, the pandemic's, you know, coming to a close now. and We want you back at American Top Team. No, I'm not going back, Dan. I appreciate the offer. Thanks, but no thanks. I love my situation at Colby Covington Incorporated MMA Masters. I'm getting better every single day. And, you know, I had to leave to grow. And, and, and that's why I've grown so much in the last year and a half since I left that gym, since the last time I fought Usman. And I'm a different person today. And you're going to see that the next time I fight. And it's going to be for a welterweight title shot. Absolutely. And like I mentioned, all your fans can't wait. But you mentioned MMA Masters. Mike Perry fought not too long ago. And I know he recently started training there a different time than yourself. But in the future, would you ever consider training with him or kind of working with him? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I told Mike, we talked before, you know, when he was coming in the gym one day, I was like, hey, man, I'd love, I'd love to train with you. You know, we can spar, we can we can grapple, we can do whatever, man. I'm, I'm the ultimate team player. I show up for everybody in the gym. I show up for the amateurs. I show up for their 16-year-old kids that come in the gym. I, I, I give my time after I'm done training with the pros, and I'll train with them too just because, you know, I want to help people out. I want to pass along the knowledge that's been passed to me, you know, and, and that's what I care about. So I'm the ultimate team player. You know, I train with everybody in the gym. You know, we got great team over there, Miguel Bay. Are coming up, big fight with Ponza Bibio. He's gonna knock him out. You know, we got Colin Lubberts, up and coming 70 pounders, stud, Richard Mayo. You know, we got a ton of studs over at that gym, and we're only getting better. I honestly think we're gonna be the cream of the crop and and really the 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 number one mecca for MMA um, gym in the near future. And Mike did say a lot of nice things about you and that you also held the door open for him and called him a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, man, you know it uh Mike's a good dude, man. It, it, you know, the, sometimes this business can really drive you to hate someone because you're trying to sell fights and you got to get locked in a cage and fight someone. So how are you going to be nice to someone that you're going to get locked into and have to take their brain cells? It's, it's hard to, to be nice to that person. You're going to want to be aggressive. You're going to want to be mean. You're going to want to be confident and talk like you, you're going to kill them. But at the end of the day, it's business, you know, and it's nothing personal. And, you know, facts over feelings for me all day. 
Well, I do follow you on Twitter. And last time we spoke not too long ago, it was about Ben Askren, Jake Paul. I saw you tweet after that fight that you thought that was a work. That was a work, Helen. That was a work. Trust me, that was a fix. Everybody knows Ben Askren took a dive. And let's be honest. Let's talk about what Ben Askren did to the wrestling community. He just set wrestling back like 100 years. It's not cool to be a wrestler with cauliflower anymore. Usually, yeah, you walk somewhere, you got the cauliflower. That's the cool thing to be. You're a wrestler. Not anymore. You're a pansy if you're a wrestler because of Ben Askren. And another message to all you washed up fighters out there. Stop giving the MMA community a bad name. You're disrespecting us all, man. Stay on the couch stop trying to come off the couch and get crash grabs because you're making the mma community look bad if if you're going to do that just let send me in there let, for the mma community to end this little youtuber little disney star i will smack the pubes off the chin of jake paul he's an amateur he's a scrub he's not a real fighter and that fight was a fix and lastly what would you like to tell all your fans who can't wait to watch you back in the octagon and i believe a lot of them after our last interview they were complimenting your beard as well <laughs> you know we're gonna we're gonna keep growing we're gonna keep getting better in all phases of life and you know the best is yet to come i promise you we're just getting warmed up we're just at the beginning right now we're not even close to the finish you won't hear me saying i'm walking away i'm retiring because i'm scared of some competition like marty fake newsman so you know the best is yet to come we're getting better every day and thank you so much to all the law enforcement out there all the military all the people that selflessly put it all on the line for our freedoms for our for, to keep law and order so thank you guys love you